See the moonlight on the town. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Tell her what TV is in the town. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Got a corner on the town. Yeah, this is the Usher of the Messenger, and you're watching Talawa TV with the host and best today. Let's take it away. Hi, this is Maria Gray, and you're watching Talawa TV with Crystal Davis. Miss Gray, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing especially great this time of my life right now. Yeah, it's been a while since we chatted. I think the last time we spoke um, was at the World Cup, like back in France in 2019. Yeah, like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, that was a it's, long, it's a long time ago. I know it's long overdue. Like when mm. I asked you for the interview, I was like, "Oh wow, it's actually been like, like you said, two years since we last right. spoke." Mm -hmm. How's life yeah. treating you? What have you been up to? Life has been good. Um, so since the World Cup. I guess we'll probably get into it later, but uh, yeah, two years ago, so I've been through a couple injuries, um, and then I finished up my undergrad career, so I literally just finished undergrad. I graduated in December from college, so I'm officially, uh, what do you call it, college graduate, and now I'm just working, training, and of course, playing with Jamaica, and then I get to kind of do what I want to do, so now I'm focusing more on ministry, focusing more on, on getting back to my my best form and um yeah so that's why i say i'm especially good i don't have homework right now that's that's the best part that's a huge bonus mm -hmm. obviously people you yes. can tell that there's many layers to her character there you heard her talk about personal achievements where university is concerned and also um god her religion and christianity also football injuries i know a lot of you come on my platform and you're always saying get gray on we need to know about gray what's going on with her injuries mm -hmm. so you have asked and hopefully i've delivered and i hope you do enjoy the interview as we go along but before we get into all of that I want you to tell us about your earliest childhood memory that, you know, persuaded you to take on a particular career path. Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. It comes with a good story. I actually started playing soccer on a select team. So in the U.S., we have rec level, select, and then premier. So I've started playing select when I was 13, which is very young, uh, very old for U.S. at least. We usually start playing around five, even three, two years old, we're kicking a ball around. Before I was 13, <clears throat> couldn't stand soccer. It was, I used to cry. My dad would, he'd bring me out to the field. And I'd be like, daddy, no, I don't want to play. Um, I used to be a break dancer and break dancing was my passion. I would be break dancing in the grocery stores, battling people at community centers, like choreographing stuff like very, I wanted like a career in break dancing. Um, and then when I started seeing players like, Messi and Ronaldo and my dad played pro he played for the for kick as one of that was one of the team I remember he played for in Mo Bay um so he's like okay I'll let you do what you want for most of your life now it's, at least just try soccer if you don't or football if you don't like it it's cool at least we tried so by the time I got to 13 I was like this is kind of fun like I see those freestyle players if I can play like them fine I'll play because it's just like dancing you can do whatever you want um, so that's kind of what I made it to be like was as long as it was enjoyable for me, that's what made the switch to I was taking soccer balls in the grocery store now and I was trying to I was playing in the streets everywhere I could go I was just playing soccer so it just did a whole flip. That is actually quite interesting. It's so funny because I think quite like myself, when I first got into football, um, I was quite young and I hated it. Never really? played the game. Yeah, I hated it. I was just like, what is this? It's just two teams trying to put the ball in the back of the net. What's that all about? It's boring. But I grew a bit like yourself, grew to love boring. and appreciate the boring. Right. Yeah, well, you know, love and appreciate the beautiful game and um, break dancing. I'm I'm quite pleased to hear that. So it will be silly of me not to ask next time mm. we score or next time you score or next mm. time Cameron score. Can we not get a, a dance from either player? Because we're desperate out here. We might might be able to see I'll, if I can remember. I'll try and remember and get get a little break dancing move in there. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that and I'm gonna give you a little gentle reminder um for the next for the next yeah. campaign, which is actually next month now, isn't it? It is, it is, yeah. It's like coming so fast. 
I have to backtrack because you touched on your dad there. So I have to ask, what position did he play in? Oh, man. I think he's played probably every position on the field. But he was, I would say his prime was cinnamon. And um, he's just a, he's a runner, like can just go for days. Um, but man, even down to goalkeeper, I was training with him today. And he's like, all right, I'll hop in goal. And he was saving all of my shots. I was like, you're like 50-something years old. <laughs> so, yeah, he played it all. He played forward, center mid, center back, outside back. But um, I think his favorite was as many touches and as much running as he can do. He was there. He sounds like a, a coach's absolute favorite player. Mm-hmm. That's the type of player that yep. you want. Somebody who is committed with balance and mm-hmm. is able to run up and down for the full 90 minutes plus. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was him. He was like, I just, he, he bloomed, he blossomed as a kid because he could do it. That He started playing with the big guys. So yeah, he had it. He had, a, he had that little special kick to him. I have to ask you as well, what what attracted you to your current position? Because, well, you know, when you're a young footballer, you don't tend to start off in the position that you go on to play mm-hmm. the, the duration of your career. So where did you start off and what led you to say, you know what, the forward position, that's me? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the forward was always me. I just, I think my dad kind of just saw it in me as a quick player. So I, when I was even playing rec, I remember playing forward and um, started to score a couple goals. So that's when they're like, okay, Maria, just go up top. You're quick. That's like the, the basic, like, fast players, go score. Um, but I started playing the nine. And then it took a while for me to realize that I was – I started to – I was more of a dribbler. So my dribbling skills came in later. So then it became, like, as much as I hated running, oh, I couldn't get over the fact I had to run. When I got over that, I was like – I just faced the fact that I was great on the wing. Like, I was great at cutting in, great at taking players on and just crossing or shooting. So when I started to, uh, to accept the fact that I was better than that at the 7-11 than the 9, I, was, I just stayed on the wing. That's, like, my, my favorite place to go. I'm glad you touched on the fact that you're a dribbler because that really solidifies something that I've touched on with regards to your game. And I was like, when I saw your name your name in the 23 player squad, I was like, thank God that she's won back. But she's a mm-hmm. she's a utility player that we could most certainly use to maximize her potential. And I have said in the past that you're a neat little forward. It's trickery. Um, mm-hmm. Good problem to have, but thankfully you're not Jamaica's problem. You're the opposition problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy to see you back in the team. Yeah, me too. It's definitely it's definitely tough right now. I'm like trying to get my dribbling skills like that's one of the things is hard after injuries. The touch, the touch is something I have to I've been getting it every single day. Got to get my my tight t- touches back, but um, mm-hmm. I'm super excited to like start striding in form, which is coming. Here and then I'm like, "Oh, yes, like it's flowing again. That mm-hmm. muscle memory is coming back." Um so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for definitely in the next couple camps. It'll start to become more natural. Um, so I do hope to be, be that, that player for the team. Um, yeah, we could definitely use that. For someone like myself who has never played football, can't play football, but do love and appreciate the game, how difficult is it? Because you touched on something quite key there. You said muscle memory. So how difficult is it for you to bounce back into your natural rhythm? And how long does that Mm. process usually take? Man, uh, it can be difficult. Um, But one of the things I notice is consistency. You surprise yourself. So for myself and even for people that have been injured that may watch this consistency, just having the hope that it will come. It, it literally feels like it will never come back. That's one thing. It's so discouraging <laughs> when you first touch the ball, the doctor says you're cleared. So you feel like in your mind, like I'm cleared. I'm just back to who I was before injury. It doesn't happen that way. But even within a week of doing the same thing every day, you said, Oh, that came back easier than I thought. Um, two weeks good and then so I would say the first time I tore my ACL I was my quick dribbling had come back really fast so the second time around it was much slower but right now I'm back to beating players and um, so I wouldn't even say that I know when I'll come back fully but I can say that the little things like you notice progress every week so I have hope I have hope to see it like okay there's no need to worry 
if I wasn't seeing any difference happening right now, I'd be like, I don't know if there's any way to, to come back to the player that I was, but I think it's really mental. And it comes to faith too, just believing that God will bring me, you know, God has spoken a lot to me about who the player that he wants me to be. Um, so I just have faith that as long as I do my part, God will also do his part. Um, and it all just kind of flow together again. I love that. And I think it's absolutely relatable um, for so many pe um, people, be it the players or us in as the 12th man watching on. I mean, you touched on the discouraging aspect, the psychological aspect. And I have to ask you, you know, how do you maintain that commitment to say, you know, what, I'm not going to be put off? And, you know, for example, you suffered a nasty injury right? That kept you out mm -hmm. for, it was like over a year, wasn't it? Um, on and mm -hmm. off, on and off. And I was wondering, I saw that you was in high spirits again, linking back to your religion. But I was wondering, I was like, how was she able to actually keep up that morale? Because for a lot of people, once your morale goes, that's pretty much it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, easily I would say, I mean, and I can be honest too, when I tore my ACL, um, my my love for the game dropped so quickly and I think it was partly because I was I was on a team where I'm watching them play every single day and um I've seen people get injured and I was like I was like ACL is a whole year so you ha I have to look like what am I going to do for the next year and I'm, I'm gonna have to sit and watch these people so um it was tough to to bounce to bounce back but then um and then now I feel like I'm I'm forgetting your question again. You just have to rephrase your question. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's about you know maintaining that commitment, that drive to say you know what right. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to persevere. Right. right. Yeah. Um, I think so. It it takes the coming in every day. So it's rehab. There's like so many stages of rehab, and then there's okay. Now we're touching the ball again. Um, for me, maintaining that morale was having little goals. It's like, okay, if I look forward to the little goals, 15 little goals is like halfway through. Another 15 little goals is like I'm back to form. I'm back to being clear to play. So I had to have checkpoints and milestones um, and do my best to get to those points. And in that, I also, when I was in the darkest place, I said, okay, if I'm if I'm here, everything that happens to me means that there's a there's a lesson that I can learn from it and so I said I really said okay God I don't want to come out of this not being the same person I don't want to be the same person that I was when I got injured so if you want to teach me a lesson open my eyes so that way I can be smarter I can be stronger I can be more experienced more mature um, and that's exactly what he did so he showed me like that I was prioritizing soccer over my identity of who I was. So soccer is not my identity. And that's what I, I was exposed to. I was like, oh my gosh, everything I do in life revolves around soccer or football. I'll say this is a football, <laughs> football fan base. So, um, so I had to see like, okay, um, am I prioritizing football? How can I now say, okay, God's first. Um, the things that God has said is important to me. So like my health, time management like characters personality like who am I and like can I sharpen that so that way when I go back when he lets me step back on the field I'm I'm a different person so it actually was ACL that I toured a second time it's like he's like oh you're not you're not quite where I want you to be yet uh, I joke about that like there's so many things I always just believe a curse is, can be turned into a blessing so not necessarily that everything that happens that's bad was God wanting to do it, but God is our savior. So he'll say, you know what, this is my daughter. Um, I'm going to make sure that if she's hurt, it's going to, it's going to, the devil's going to be mad that he ever did that. So that's what I believe that um, now, even though I got injured and I was out and um, not being the player I wanted to be in that time, now I'm even a better player, a stronger, mental, more mentally tough player. Um, so anyway, long answer, but to keep that morale, it was just trusting that this is a process that needs to happen. And growth is never, never easy, never pain free. So that pushed me to, to stay up. 
I love the fact that through all of that, those dark moments that you touched on, that you somehow manage with the help of God, that you manage to see the the positives when your your life looked pretty bleak. So, you know, hats off to you as well. And guys, I'm pretty sure you picked up on something there, which for me shows that she is a lady of attention to detail. I think we can all appreciate the fact that she has dropped soccer and replaced it with football. Me pers personally, I didn't mind. I know what she meant. And you guys know what she meant as well so here we have a lady who is all about attention to detail so I'm sure you can all appreciate that going back to what you were some speaking on in regards to you know your road to recovery what's your advice to young boys and young girls who find themselves in your position where they're sitting on the sideline for an extended period of time hmm. yeah that's a good question and I also add that the the people that can help you there's There'll be people that are raised up to lead you back into your shape um, and take advantage of those people. Those people were key because not every day when you're injured and you have to go in and recover and do rehab, it's, it can be fun. It, can be, it won't always be fun and, in fact, mentally draining. So there was days where I just leaned on my, my PT, my physical trainers, and I just said, today is not the day, but they'll push you. And allow them to push you even in the days that you're down that's just where you need someone to pick you up um so yeah the people super key but also um like i said when it comes to injury you can let it destroy you you can become depressed it, these are just real things you can become depressed um you can hate yourself in many ways um because we find our identity in our sport so what happens when you lose your identity quote unquote identity because it shouldn't be that. We shouldn't depend depend on that. So if you feel that your injury has destroyed you and you have no hope, no joy, you wake up, you're not happy, that means that we've been relying on something that's not, a, it doesn't provide anything real. Our identity should be something that when we wake up, no matter if our situation is good or bad, our identity is constant, therefore our joy is constant. Um, another thing with, staying happy is that or during injury is that injury actually taught me how to become a better athlete so learn to perfect the little things like I should be doing band workouts to strengthen my hips my hamstrings the little muscles and I should be I should be stretching every day I should be drinking water now you can focus on being a healthier athlete um so in that time of injury work on other things work on Work, if you're always late to things, try to try to be on time to things. If you're if you never have time for homework, now you maybe have a little bit more time to do homework and become a better student. Um, so perfect perfect yourself in little things. And everyone says like nobody's perfect, so I'll just say sharpen yourself. Um, sharpen. I always I give myself a standard of of perfection because I just love growth. But if that feels like it's too much pressure on you, just say how can I be sharpened in any situation and you'll always have something to do. And that, that keeps me going. That gives me a smile on my face. So I, I, hope, I hope that helps other athletes doing the same thing. You know, thank you for that response. I have to ask you something, and I do appreciate that it is a sensitive subject not perhaps not just for yourself, but also for my, for me as well. And, you know, even people who work their usual or their typical common nine to five jobs and professional athletes. How do you get that balance right to say, whilst I am a professional athlete, I need to deliver because perhaps that's what's expected of me. But at the end of the day, health is wealth. How do you get that balance right to say, I'm going to deliver, but when the time is right, when it's necessary, I'm also going to say it is my mental health above everything else. Mm. Yeah, um, that's a good question. And I would say right now I'm in the process of learning how to do that for myself because um, during my injury, I did have more time to see how much I value my mental health um, and how much I value just time of rest. Um, and I was able to do it. I had more time to do it. So now I'm getting back into that. Um, I'm traveling with Jamaica. I also travel and or do work with my church. I'm working. So now I'm kind of be tested to like, okay, how can I still fit in my rest days? And there are some times where um, you recognize, okay, I'm so beat right now. I just have to learn how to it'd be okay with canceling on people. And I'm also being taught right now. I'm in this kind of this kind of process this season of like 
being taught on like planning ahead and just recognizing, okay, don't always have to say yes to opportunities. If an opportunity comes, so cool, but there will become a time where if your skills are admired and, and acquired in a lot of places, you will be asked and welcomed and invited everywhere. Such a blessing, but even, but even Jesus ran away and took time for himself and isolated himself because as much as people wanted and loved him, he had to be refilled from the source. So there's times where we have to just rest, take care of ourselves. Um, and I'm learning that now because sometimes I'm a busy girl. When I'm sitting at home, I'm like, what can I do? How can I stay busy? So um, I'm learning that right now. I actually just had to cancel, unfortunately, on somebody that it was a cool opportunity, but it wasn't, um, it would have taken a lot from me. So uh, I just prayed about it, but I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to, going to have to say no, um, but in the future, maybe I can again. So there will be tough situations. It just takes a little wisdom um, and timing, but yeah, that's how it's best take care of yourself. I love that response. Um, You hit the nail on the head there. You heard it from the lady herself, guys. Even Jesus himself had a rest day. So rest when you need mm -hmm. to. And it's also important to echo that it's okay to not be okay. Equally as important as it is okay, absolutely okay to say no to any given opportunity if you are not comfortable and not mm -hmm. able to get that balance right. So I hope you're listening and taking those notes there from Ms. Gray because she is giving us some absolute um, authentic responses as well obviously all relatable to her career so far I want to like change this, the subjects a, a little bit because it is kind of emotional there when we touched on mental well-being a bit like yourself I want to echo that that is something that I'm trying to learn and get better at as well I think it's something that takes gradual steady step you know, you're not going to figure it out overnight. And I think that comes with age and experience. Um, yeah. And even then, when you're at a certain age in your life, um, something that's probably a seasoned vet, you probably still don't have everything figured out. So do try to take it easy on yourself. For people out there who are struggling with their mental well-being, please do take it easy on yourself. One of the main questions that people are always asking me is, what is going on with Miss Gray's club situation? Where is she at? They actually asked me this last year, so during your whole journey towards recovery. And I was like, guys, she's um, injured. So in your own words, what's going on with your club situation? Yeah. And you're all good questions. I've been really, <laughs> even even my closest friends are like, what are you doing? <laughs> or like people that I play with. Um, and I have just been kind of on my own. And lately I haven't had to report to people. So I don't report to people. <laughs> um, not to you're your own boss now. Intentionally, yeah. Not to be intentionally <laughs> mysterious, but it just comes out that way. Um, but yeah, so injury. I was, when I first injured myself, that was my, I was going into junior year of college, then um, went into my senior year. So my junior year, I tore it. So that whole year recovery, and I was hoping that my last year, my final, my fourth year of school, I'd be able to play. And then it was COVID, all that situation happened. But um, even when we were gonna start a training camp for that college year, I tore it again. So I was, and I was feeling so on in like top form. I was ready to come back. Um, and just what happens sometimes is when you tear one ACL, the other one, the other leg might not be as strong as the one you've been focusing on, working on. And that's exactly what happened is one of my legs was like too, too strong. The other one was just where it has always been at. Um, so the other one tore, unfortunately. And so that was my second ACL. That one I did a little bit more damage, so it took a long time to recover. I actually had to get two surgeries. So six months in, I went back under the knife. Um, so that way they could, there was so much scar tissue built up that they had to like cut open, clean it out, and then just like crank it. So that way my little knee would be more mobile. So that took two years total. Now I'm coming back. I took my fifth year of college thinking I was going to play. But like I said, because the second surgery, it pushed my whole recovery time back and I wasn't back where I planned to be. So I didn't get to play my fifth year. Um, so it was like junior year, senior year, fifth year, no playing time. 
Um, and then, so now that it's right now, so I just finished fifth year just a couple months ago. I'm finally back playing, back training. I feel myself. Um, I went to Grenada. I got to play against Bermuda a little bit, which is perfect for me. Just baby steps. That's kind of what I need. Um, and then I'm not playing out of college right now, so I finished my undergrad. There are some thoughts of returning. Um, if I don't return, I would just train and then maybe play abroad. That's what I would like to do. But regardless, I will play abroad at some point, so I could either go back to college in the fall, this fall, um, or start looking at some agents and see where I can go. Um, but yeah, so right now, for, for anyone that's really wanting to know where am I right now, I'm a free, I'm a free agent pretty much between college, between pro, but mostly focusing on getting back in form, getting playing time, we're like refreshing my mind, turning the gears again, turning the muscles on again and um, being, getting strong and, and um, yeah, back into my IQ too. So. Lovely stuff. I'm not going to put any words into your mouth. I'm pretty sure you would know or you should be able to assume where I would like to see you play in terms of country. But I'm going to leave that to you <laughs> and, and let you tell us which country you would like to play in. Um, That's a So there's a process. I have like a couple of thoughts. I would love to play in Europe. I'll start with that. But my dream is actually to play in South America. And that is because for a long time, Spanish is my is one of my passions. I grew up around people that spoke it. And then um, I studied it in, in college. So that's my minor. I studied abroad in Peru. Uh, the, actually, the summer of the World Cup, I went straight to Peru. And I lived there for about um, almost two months. Um, so, yo hablo espanol un poco. Um, and that would be awesome to find a competitive league in South America. So I've been talking to some people, Chini Lu, she, um, she played in Colombia. So she said that was a pretty good league. And she, the Spanish, her Spanish went up and that's like just a dream to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I just want to speak Spanish while also doing what I love. And people say, well, what about if you don't get paid that much? And I'm like, honestly, it's one of those things that it's just so much of a passion that as long as I can feed myself and have a place to sleep and play ball, and speak Spanish, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, after that is when I do desire to um, to play in Europe. Uh, I would say that France would be super cool. <laughs> Sorry, um, France, England, of course. Uh, you know, there we go. So we got there quality. in the end. Yeah, quality <laughs> so- quality football in in England. Um, and I got I got a good friend there. Um, his name's Andrew, and he's a He's actually a mentor for Christian athletes. So if I were to go there, I know I would have him right on my, you know, always getting my back and, and allow me to come and hang out with him, especially if I really needed it. Um, so England would be, would be next. I love that. Um, everything that you've said, I'm um, touching on South American um, football and the possibility of going over to um, South America to play in their leagues. What I like about you as well is you seem like a proactive person outside of the field of play and I was actually going to touch on your minor there in Spanish and I'm sure that will be a degree that you will be able to utilize in your career so kudos for, to you for being on um, proactive you. and trying to think ahead. Thank you. <laughs> You're most welcome. Mm-hmm. You touched on Bermuda and also Grenada it would be foolish of me not to ask you uh, what was it like to finally link up with the national side again? It was so much fun. I um, I got to, you know, see all the girls again, and I was kind of eager to see what it would be like because uh, I saw, like, a bunch of new names on the roster, and which something that was nice, not too nice, but, you know, the team, because of COVID, didn't get to meet a lot. Um, so when I was injured, the team also wasn't really meeting. So I actually didn't miss too much. Um, but there were some new girls that I got to meet, and I love them. They're so cool. They're actually from England. And so I can't help myself when uh, I'm talking to them and I just pick up the English accent. I'm like, in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, in it. Cheers. <laughs> but uh, I find it so fun. And I'm like, I don't want to be annoying. I'm like that American that's always just repeating back them their accent to them. <laughs> um, but other than that, man, the girls are so cool. They're one of my favorite parts about going out there because it's crazy how we all have 
it's a lot of personality on that team great mm-hmm. personality too but we all mesh perfectly so it's like you wouldn't want anything better in a team to have so much personality quality on the ball and then but you don't like there's no drama and so um for as long as I've been there you know there hasn't been anything anything major so um it's a pleasure and then of course playing on the field again I have to say it was like it was different (laughs) I was like wow I totally forgot like the whole sensation of being on the field and so I was a little bit I was rusty for sure um I'd say by the end of the the minutes that I got I was starting to get into a little bit of a groove um but I only played so long so it was good enough for me to get that taste back um but it's just an honor and a blessing of course to just step on the field and say like okay this is the beginning of a journey um and it wasn't discouraging at all and the coaches and everybody was very welcoming to me especially the doctors they're the one I've known since the 20s so they were like, sugar, <laughs> they call me Sugar Ray or sugar. So um, that was, it was cool. I was like, well, I'm back with my, my family. So yeah, I felt awesome. That's beautiful. What's the key difference between then and now? Because from an outsider looking in, it's very different. For me, one thing I've picked up is there's loads more attention on the reggae girls now than ever mm-hmm. before, which is obviously great because it helps with the growth and development of women's football. The more people speaking, hopefully positive things, the better impact it should have on the team as a collective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, um, I have to say like, even me growing up, I didn't hear much about the reggae girls because yeah, I grew up in America. Um, I knew about Jamaica football a little bit. I knew that the team existed, that there was this football team. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you mean, I, everyone knows like this was the first time qualifying to the World Cup. So um, more pressure. Even people are saying like, is the pressure getting to you? And I'll just say um, that th- we have re- raise another level of quality like the players are better I mean there's people where we're scouting from more places now like I'm hearing of I'm like, oh man there's a lot more Jamaicans than I knew out there um so I don't doubt that we can do good again um but yeah it is a lot more attention way more newscasts are like DMing me can we interview can we interview like now I have to kind of what I said is like pick and choose like okay I can't say yes to everybody um but it's cool to see that so many people are caring about not only just the Jamaica team, but the women. And, you know, we just had an International Women Day. So it's awesome that now women are like really a, a stamp of, for Jamaica across the world. So. Absolutely. I'm loving the attention that the women's teams get in. I hope that it is sincere attention and there's nothing crafty going on but um behind the scenes with regards to approaching players for interviews. So as long as the attention is pure and sincere, then I think it will benefit you and the rest of the team. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that for sure. <laughs> and you girls are clever enough to um to know what to say yes to and what to say no to so there shouldn't yeah. be nothing for us as the 12th man to be worried about I have mm-hmm. to talk about the main reason that I wanted to speak to you today and I've been watching you from a distance and I've noticed over the last year or so I was like oh seems like she's um really drawn closer to Christ and I could be wrong but I have to ask you you know when did you notice the importance of wanting to draw closer to your religious beliefs yeah um this is a it was a okay yeah so this is a good question it'll bring out a lot of honesty in me um and I pray that for those that that do follow Jesus um or even maybe don't uh, that it'll it'll resonate with them so for me it did start around my injury but actually a little bit before so some people would say like oh you you know you got injured and it brought you back to the faith which is totally fine because that's what happens to a lot of people one of my my spiritual mentors my spiritual dad I call him he says sometimes you have to hit the lowest low to get to your highest high and um so it was around the time and I got convicted not about like who's what's my identity but more so about the way I was living um I went to college with all these high standards of myself and um of like my morals and my godly morals I would hold and I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna party I'm not gonna do all these things and I just went south like everything that I said I wouldn't do I did 
and I was the best at it. <laughs> That's one thing is one thing I'll do. I'll be the best at anything I do, even if it's not admirable. <laughs> um, and so I fell into this lifestyle of just not acknowledging God. I just stopped going to church as much and I just felt like empty inside. And I, the way to avoid that, like me facing or confronting my emptiness was continuing in the lifestyle. That's just, you just continue to run away from it until I got to a point where it was so bad. Um, when I met who is now my spiritual mom and dad, I bless them. They're just awesome to me. They didn't force me to do anything, but they taught me, they poured into me. And the way that they live life was like, I, this is exactly where God was leading me. So it was in that time of injury where he said, okay, look, I'm turning your face this way. Um, and he gave me the choice to say, you can either go back to your lifestyle because it was during COVID. So when school came back on, I was, I was like, you can go back to the lifestyle or you can go back to school and be unrecognizable. And I just said, it's worth it, God, to be unrecognizable, maybe lose friends, maybe not be liked as much because I'm going to be proud about, you know, the mark of Christ on me. And that's what I did. And I didn't lose friends. I, you know, eventually I stopped hanging out with some people because that's what it takes. There's people that will lead you to your destiny. And my destiny is in God. And then there's people that will not see your destiny. It's not that they're like trying to pray on your downfall. There are people like that, but most people don't know. Um, so I, it was, it was up to me to say, this is where God's taking me. I know where he's taking me and, and these people just weren't a part of it, at least to be that close to me. So, uh, that was the beginning of it. And, um, I started going to this church called Fountain of Hope, um, Ministries International. It's a, it was got, it got branches all over the place. So it's a, in Africa and in a uh, couple of places in USA and, um, even working on one in Europe and Germany. So. This is all over the place. A blessed, a blessed church, and our heart is to go out to reach, to reach the the lost, to reach the hopeless. And so I've been traveling, doing mission trips now. And we've personally, I've gone to a country called Benin in West Africa three times. Um, and man, I have seen God move. I've seen people just like immediate miracles, things that probably some stories that would scare people because that place is like the the um, world capital of witchcraft and beauty. Oh man, that place is like no joke. Um, we have to come prayed up when we go over there. But it's cool how like when I was injured, God said, this is who you can become. And then so now I'm back into soccer. So I'm still this person that is used to travel to these countries and bring hope and teach the word and, and allow people to receive salvation. Um, and also on the other hand, I'm also taking flights out to go play and do what my, my other passion is. So he's combining the two um, and he's teaching me that they don't have to be separate. So that's where I am now is ministry is wherever I go. If God is in me, so is the ministry, so is the gospel. So if I'm playing on the field, I'm also, as soon as I step off the field, maybe even on the field, uh, I'm, I'm ministering to somebody or just allowing God to use me. So maybe it's in the way that I walk and the way that I talk. Or maybe if someone needs encouragement, that's the time for God to really shine uh, through me and whatever he wants to do. So yes, that has been, that is the God side of me. Is he's, he's raising up a, a servant in me um and i never would have said i could have been there but now i'm i'm serving as the youth pastor in my church and so i i teach teenagers i teach the young tots um and i'm also have the opportunity to intern at a college ministry so it's a uh, it's it's amazing i can, i wouldn't really see myself doing this five years ago but here i am so and i have i'm having the best time too you are an absolute superstar a role model in every sense of the world in every sense of the word I should say and I know that your career uh, with, with whichever direction you choose to go on I know that you're going to flourish and bl blossom into something quite fruitful for the world to see so you know best of luck with to you and the duration of your career Thank you so much. Whilst you were speaking there, um, you reminded me of someone and I just couldn't help um, but to um, bring her name into the conversation because I think it makes perfect sense. But you reminded me of the late, great Miss G. Nelson. Uh, yes, Jean Nelson. <laughs> She's awesome, man. I, I, yeah, 
that was uh, she was a blessing to know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's your fondest memory of her yeah I have a very clear memory of her and it wasn't anything you know out there I'll, I'll have one small memory so I didn't get to meet her that much but we mm -hmm. did connect very well because I came to the World Cup journey very late so I maybe had two three camps with her um but so that my first camp with her I remember she, we went to Usain Bolt's restaurant and she was up there dancing oh my goodness she was dancing and, and really being herself um so I would say she's she's just a light to be around she was like the mother of the team always caring and and and, and always thing I love about her is she always was saying made sure to say God bless you um and blessings this this and that so one day this is the memory one day we're traveling to from Jamaica to Florida and um we're get, waiting for our bags for so long so we just start chatting and she um she just said I love that like I love that you're about your faith and I was like I love your faith and she goes and tells me that she's like you know that I pray and I fasted for this team and I said what you fasted for this team She's like, oh, yeah. She's like, I pray for this team. And immediately I was just like, you know, without God's glory being shined, without intercessors behind the scenes, uh, like prayer warriors basically on the team, I don't think that we would have made it as far as we did. So I was like, in my head, I'm like, you know, it was you. You're the reason why we went so, as far as we did. Obviously, we work hard, but like if God doesn't want something to happen, it won't happen. Um, and so I just was like, when she passed away, I was like, man, that was our intercessor. That was our prayer warrior. And immediately I was like, oh, God, is that going to have to be me now? <laughs> Am I going to have to pray for the team? Um, but that's something that I know that moment was so special because it was almost as if the baton was passed. So as soon as she passed, so I found out about her passing. God just reminded me of that conversation we had of her saying, you know, I fasted and I pray for this team. I love these girls. And um, that touched me. And I was like, I have to carry on whatever God put in her to do. Because I know she felt that, like, this is my, this is my spiritual duty. Um, that's now something that I'm going to take in honor of her and also in honor of God's mission. That's beautiful. You've probably just gone and um, perhaps unintentionally given yourself a name. So you might hear people calling you, calling you um, Pastor Gray from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, they call me, the, the youth, they call me Pastor Maria. The little <laughs> girls, they like can barely pronounce my name. They're like, Pastor Maria. <laughs> so cute. So it, would, it wouldn't be new. It wouldn't be strange, but that'd be really funny if they did on the field, Pastor Gray. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that might be a thing from now on. I'm even thinking of doing it myself. Mm. Um, Pastor Gray from now on. Mm -hmm. um, the, the prayer warrior, like mm. you said, the late, great Miss G. Nelson somehow mm. passed on the baton to you. And I think at the time you probably didn't realize it, but oftentimes we see things clearer in hindsight. Right, yeah. Yeah, I have to you. ask you again, um, just to like backtrack just a little bit there, um, as we're talking about Christianity and your religion, what benefits have you gained from giving your life to Christ? Mm. Oh man, uh, I can say, in particular, there's one thing. So since I've actually gone into this this ministry, this church I'm a part of, and the ladies can testify, specifically the ladies in the church, because they have seen this like young lady sprout out of who I was and I can say in sports they they tend to raise up girls being more masculine um but God has created us to be exactly who we're called to be and there's a beautiful woman inside of us and if there are there are ways that we can kind of like buff up ourselves um and I it doesn't say that I'm not as strong as I am I'm so strong I'm actually stronger but there's like a way that he's allowed me to love myself and to love my beauty um, and to look at myself and say I am beautiful because I'm I'm God's daughter, um, and I'd say I like I loved wearing dresses. I love dressing up to church. I love like I didn't even wear makeup before. Now I like wearing makeup and wearing my hair down and out. And um and they can say like Maria in terms of the lady that she is, she can she truly is a young lady. Um and so he transformed that. He showed me who who he's called me to be. Um. And then a, a leader, he's risen a leader out of me where I'm confident in the things that I say. 
one because he's taught me how to think about what I say, make having wisdom in the words I choose. So now when I speak, I know I know what I'm saying, I know how to say it, um, and I have hope. I wake up even when I like I said, I wake up. Maybe the situation's not bad. Maybe I don't have enough money to pay my rent. Oh goodness, I've been tested in that way finances since I'm not on scholarship anymore. Um, but God has taught me that the words that I speak have power. Literally, I'll say one testimony. I was a few days from paying my rent, nowhere near enough money. So I said, God, you are the God of silver and gold. I don't want to borrow money. I'm going to need my rent paid. The next morning, two times the amount of what my rent costs entered my bank account. I don't know how. I had to ask people, like, are you sure this is right? They're like, yeah. They just told us to send it to you. So this is yours. I said, Oh man, I, uh, some of my friend always says, don't put a question mark where God put a period. <laughs> so I just left it at that. I said, Jesus, you are faithful. So there's, there's just, I don't worry anymore in my life situations. And I, I have so much peace. People always say like, you, why don't you stress about this, this, this? Or like right in the moment of a stressful situation, I'm just like, I'm fine. And the Bible talks about peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, so that's definitely a way that just, that's how I live by. I wake up in peace. I go to sleep in peace. Um, but it's not because of me. It's just because I know God's promise for my life, um, that he has a destiny for me. Destinies are real. Um, as long as we're living in the will of God, we're the only ones that can pull ourselves from our destiny by making the wrong choices. And I learned that the hard way. Um, and so coming back to God, everything goes right. Everything goes right. Everything makes sense. Um, opportunities just come to me. I'm just standing here. They're like, you want a job? You want to get paid? You want to do this? Here's, here's food. Here's money. Here's this. Like, I'm like, oh, God, it's too much. Um, so following Jesus, I'm like, what was I doing before this? I don't know. I was wasting my time. Um, yeah, but it takes humility. It takes like literally laying down and saying, I'm not the God of my life and realizing that I have made wrong choices. If you don't know, they always say like the lost person doesn't know that they're lost <laughs> spiritually. Um, so it takes saying like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I might have been wrong. I'm not always right. And but God can help you to to be right, or at least to know the right path to go on. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> Mireya, you are absolutely precious. Like you're just a little <laughs> gem. Like honest, honest to God, I'm learning so much by listening to you. I was learning a lot, by the way, when um you go off and you're traveling from one country to another, and I was just like, she's literally the the perfect role model, not just for little oh, wow. girls, um, women my age, uh, men my oh. age, and obviously um little boys as well um not just in Jamaica but across the the globe so you know hats off to you for the way you carry yourself the way you go about life the way you navigate um through life and long may the positivity and the success continues Amen. thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome before I allow you to go because it's almost been an hour um sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm enjoying my interview it's so hard to bring <laughs> <it in. laughs> yeah but yeah. I will have to because you're in your car god bless you so mm -hmm. before you go I have to ask you what country so far has provided the biggest impact on your life oh wow um okay so I would say the impact on my life has definitely been the spiritual side of things so when I did go to Benin, which is the West African country, that was the main impact. And so I would say though, I have been to a lot of countries, um, all through soccer, except for Peru. That was where I studied abroad. But at the end of that study abroad, I went and I played uh, in the Pan Am games, which were in Lima, Peru. So um, there's lots of places that taught me about people. Um, there's so many different people around the world. But when it comes to just real impact that would change me forever, it was Benin. And I'll say why, because, um, man, going in ministry, you get to see the pain. And you also get to see people in the best joy of their life. And so I've seen, um, I've seen stories where people will text me registering, but they're like, can you help me? Um, I have no food. I, I get beat every day by their, you know, their families or 
or like um I'm in a, I got in a car accident I have no money to take care of myself so my eyes were just open and like people are suffering in this world and there's obviously wars in the world but then there's just like there's just thousands of people hundreds of thousands of people that just simply don't have enough money to put food on the table um or they are maybe almost well off they have a business but every time they make money it, it disappears or they're dry um and we live in a world of afflictions um so that opened my eyes to say i am needed but people are needed if you are willing to be used by god be used by god because the world need, needs it and the bible says the harvest is plenty but the workers are few um so it just it breaks my heart but then when they come and they receive hope at these crusades that we hold we had one outdoor crusade on a dirt soccer field and prophetically we we speak to them and reveal things about their life or how god wants to bless them and i've seen people lay out their whole bodies in the dirt thanking god um so that's how much hope it brings to them is they don't care about the nice dress that they put on they are so relieved and so thankful for how god sent someone all the way from usa it doesn't matter where you're from but sent them so far just to tell someone that i've heard your prayer um so that impacts me it just shows me like Maria, your life in this little bubble that you've had for 20 years plus years is is it's greater than what you've ever seen um and so seeing people impacted like that changed the way that i live life i'm thankful for every little thing that i have now um so yeah benin west africa just the mission that god called to be in that country is the reason why that country specifically has changed my life and that country is full of joy dancing they dance they sing i was like god knew exactly where to send me uh so there's so, the food mwah, just amazing and they speak french there so i love languages and so i'm picking up french so it's just really transformed me and, and stretched me as a person um so yeah i would say that country for sure wonderful stuff um thank you for that it's very insightful um before you go I don't want to put you under too much pressure I'm sitting over here and I'm a little bit nervous for next month with our next two games <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know how you're feeling uh we all know how the group stage looks like the the group table how are you mm -hmm. feeling about the next two uh fixtures there where our group stage is concerned um yeah um I feel I feel confident in the in the team, the, how do you say, like the level of the players that we have, I couldn't find the word, but the people, the players that we have are top. They're very talented. Um, I would just say the pressure will come on and say like how quickly can we mesh as a team? Cause we don't meet, we don't meet often. We come yeah. in, we train once and we play. Um, so I'm just hoping, praying that we'll be able to mix and get chemistry quickly um, and that will really determine how well we can play against these teams. But in terms of the quality we have, we're there. Um, and in terms of we'll just need to prepare, strategize, um, everything, we're capable, more than capable, though. So that's all I can say. Amazing stuff. Well, I believe in yourself and the rest of your team. I have no doubt in your quality. You. Um, so I do think you will go on to execute in the plan and move on to the next hurdle. So best of luck when the games come around the way. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you before I get my before I forget my manners. Thank you so much for blessing me with a moment of your time. It's long overdue and hopefully we can catch up again sometime in the near future. Yes, I hope so. And I'll just say, um, you're one of my favorite, uh, what do you call it, newscasts or whatever you call this thing. But I Thank love you. speaking to you from the moment I met you uh, the first time. I just, I sense purity. So just pure in heart, just loves the game. So I pray that this Taloa TV just blows up because it's well deserving of it. Um yeah, so keep going. I, I enjoyed this interview a lot. And shout Thank out to all the you. fans as well. I, they're going to love you because they've been on my back. They're like, can you get her? I'm like, guys, the interviews are not, the, the requests are not as easy as you make it seem <laughs> to be, you know. I'm like, thankfully, I'm dealing with someone who is pure and honest and lovely. Um, So mm -hmm. I had a feeling that she would say yes, but people are busy. So when you give me your request, 
be patient with me. Um, but thank you so much again for blessing me with your time. Uh, yeah, of course. Thanks for the opportunity.